oh, we had equipment that was stolen with one of these modified air tags inside it that was actually out in Seattle. And uh, I knew exactly where it was. I was watching it go up the street. And uh, we notified the police over there and they actually found the stuff and arrested a person. And that person was charged with grand theft. So he's probably still in jail. Once all 12 screws are removed, you can lift up the console cover. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to look at Apple AirTags and how you can get more out of an AirTag. And I'm talking about battery life. I've not seen anybody do this before, but I came up with this idea because the company I work for, we ship equipment all over the world. Um, I remember one time FedEx lost one of our pieces of equipment. They had no idea where it was. So I started to look for a way of putting some kind of tracking device in our equipment that we would know where it is. Um, the problem with air tags I ran into was the battery life is only good for about a year. And sometimes equipment will go out. It's going to be out there for more than a year traveling around the world. And um, I had to come up with a way to make that battery life last longer. So what I started to look into was an external battery wired in to an air tag. And uh, one of these CR2032s, which is the battery that the air tag actually works with, has, it was rated at 210 milliamp hours. Now, one of these guys, these ER14505s, look at that, 2400 milliamp hours. That is 11 times more uh, milliamp hours or capacity than the button cell down there. Now, the button cell is rated at three volts. This battery actually has a higher voltage, 3.6 volts, but that actually has no effect. Um, as a matter of fact, it will produce a stronger signal from what I found, which is even better. That Bluetooth signal that it's sending out, its beacon, um, it will actually travel further, hit more ISO devices out there, uh, that are part of the Find My Network, and uh, the more the merrier, because that's what this is all about. What people don't actually understand is how the air tags work. They are not a GPS themselves. They're simply sending out a beacon on Bluetooth that ISO devices receive, and then that ISO device uses its own GPS to send along back to the host device that that AirTag is registered to. The more ISO devices that pick up the beacon uh, simultaneously, uh, the more accurate the actual location of the AirTag becomes because you've now got GPS readings from several different devices in the vicinity that will actually do something known as multilateration. It's a calculation that allows, uh, if you have more than three or four positions, or more than that, uh, the better. Um, yeah, that's where multilateration calculations could come in, and it can actually be super accurate down, down to, you know, less than a meter. And I've actually witnessed this, especially in airports where there's a lot of devices. We had, um, show you something else here. This is an AirTag uh, teardown. But uh, yeah, we had uh, some stuff go missing at an airport and I knew exactly where it was at Heathrow and we advised the courier company and they found it. Not only that, uh, we had equipment that was stolen with one of these modified air tags inside it that was actually out in Seattle and uh, I knew exactly where it was. I was watching it go up the street and uh, we notified the police over there and they actually found the stuff and arrested a person and that person was charged with grand theft so he's probably still in jail um yeah the, these are all uh air tags i have in equipment all around the world there's one actually down in central america right now which is really cool that guy's actually using a starlink or one of our units so Getting back to this, what I actually do is we're going to open this up. 
we're going to remove the plastic cover, which will also disable the speaker. And actually, I don't put the cover back because we don't need it. It's gonna look kind of like this. Um, there are up here two BCC pins, which are battery and ground. I don't actually wire there. I wired down here. Pin uh, six and seven, those are actually test points. Six and seven are the same as one and two. So I put a blob of solder there and tie those two together and that is my positive. And I typically don't go on five for the ground, even though it is ground, I'll just use a ground up here, like on the edge there, it's just easier to solder on. And how I do that is I use one of these. Well, these are cheaply obtainable on Amazon. Um, I like the ones with a switch on them. And see, so it's got two wires, which we're gonna wire. And basically, you open it up, you put it inside your battery. Now, one thing I wanna point out is that the battery terminal down there, the positive battery terminal, um, see that plastic on each side of it? We have to cut that back a little bit because a standard battery like that has more of a point on it. These lithium batteries are more flat and they've deliberately done that because this battery is 3.6 volts. One of these standard alkaline batteries is uh, one and a half volts. So imagine if you were to put a bunch of these in some piece of equipment, it's double the voltage. It, it could damage it. So, but in our situation, we actually want, uh, you know, we want to use one of these. This is perfect. So we're going to do a little bit of a modification to this case. And uh, we're going to cut that back. And what I like to do too, since this is permanent, it's never going to be opened again. I throw a bit of silicone inside there, silicone sealant, just to, to hold, hold the, the battery in place. Um, yeah, so, it, you know, it's going to be inside equipment. It's going to be subject to a lot of vibration. And, uh, yeah, so that's basically it. So let's get to work. Uh, I'm going to start opening one of these up, and we're going to start to wire it up. And I'll show you the whole procedure. Um the other thing is because we're removing the speaker, uh, that is actually a good thing because when an Apple AirTag is away from its home device, it will start to emit a sound. Um, you know, we don't want that coming out of our equipment. Uh, you know, uh, now people do get a warning on their phone that they're being tracked. Uh, not not an issue for us. Uh, you know, they realize, you know, that we probably have. You know, we're we're keeping tabs on where our, our stuff is. But there is a way to get around that, and I'm not going to tell you how to do it, but there's enough room inside. See that red wire? You could put a chip in there that turns the power off and on, toggle the power off and on every hour or so. Um, any device that is in range that is, it thinks that AirTag is following them will um, basically lo lose track. And that's, that's how you do it. You need to just toggle the power and you can get around that. Okay, guys, I'm gonna start uh, showing you how to modify an AirTag. There we go. We don't need that anymore. There's your magnet. Throw that away. And there we go. Okay, now we're gonna start soldering. Okay guys, while the soldering iron is warming up, I'm gonna show you the little modification I gotta do with the battery holder. We pop that out like that and uh, get some diagonal cutters and get down inside there on each side and just cut that plastic there and cut that plastic there like that a little bit more okay let's make it wider okay that looks pretty good make sure you get all the little pieces out put the uh, the metal terminal back in push it down in there 
And uh, let's put our battery in. And I think it's making a connection. Actually, let me check that. I think we gotta cut a little bit more. Actually, there was a bit of, okay, get that down in there nice and snug. I think that's better. Had a piece of plastic in there. Oh yeah, that's making a connection, I can see that. And we can turn on our voltmeter here. And uh, get leads. And we'll check it. Make sure, oh, there's a little switch. The switch is on. And we go like that, and there we go. 3.7 volts, good. Now I'm gonna shut that switch off because if these wires touch, we don't wanna hurt the battery. And we're going to do one other thing. Stop it for now. I like using uh, GE, General Electric Silicone. Seems to be the best uh, when it hardens. It's really nice, nice and rubbery. There's other ones out there that just aren't that great, I found. So I always use and recommend General Electric Silicone. But what I'm actually going to do is I am going to place some um, just on, oh, boy, this thing is, whoa, there we go. <laughs> a little bit more than I, whoa, needed. That always happens. Let me just put this over here out of the way. And, uh, yeah, a little bit more than we needed, but I'm going to put this on. Slide that on like that. We'll wipe off the excess. Okay, like that. There's a place for a screw too. Probably not going to need it. Get out some tissue here and just wipe off the excess. Okay, guys. So, guys, I was wrong in the beginning. I said it's these two that need to be soldered together. The middle one and the bottom one, but it is actually... The top one and the middle one, the bottom one is ground. Ground is the same as over here. So what we're going to do we are going to get some solder. Solder wire here and we got a nice hot soldering iron. And uh, we are going to solder these two together like that and we're going to get our battery the battery pack which is turned off right now and these wires come pre-tinned which is really nice and you just go like that okay yep it's good and then uh pick up a ground could be any of these corners and go like that. Sometimes it's helpful just to uh, take this down. Go like that. <clears throat> and there you go. That's all there is to it. And then what I do to get some more silicone and we just fill that in like that and that is going to protect the wires from uh, getting pulled out. You get one of the plastic like this from a, <clears throat> a SIM card or something and uh, just kind of smooth it out like that and that's all there is to it guys you let that silicone dry what I typically do is I use velcro I'll put a piece of velcro on the back I'll put a piece of velcro on this and then I'll stick it inside wherever now I highly recommend you put not just one, but two or three of these in your car. Hide them in your car. 
if your car's ever stolen, have it up under the dash, have it, you know, just hidden in places where they're never going to find it. Um, yeah, you're more likely to find your car this way, tracking it with something like this than with a professional GPS tracker, because a lot of the guys, the thieves, they just disable those, you know, low jack systems and trackers. They know how to do it. Uh, but something like this, simple, uh, and the fact that you've got a 10-year battery on it once you put it in place, you're never going to have to uh, worry about that battery. Um, one uh, good example of that, community forum here where I live, a guy found a cat. He put a picture of the cat up on, on the website, and I noticed the cat had uh, an AirTag collar on. So I told the guy, I said, you know, that cat's got a, that's a tracking device, you know, it's an air tag. He, this guy had no idea. Um, I told him, I, you know, he, he had the cat for a day. Nobody came looking for the cat. So I said, you know, take, take the air tag off the collar and um, take the battery out and put it back in. If it doesn't make any sound, because air tags always make that sound when you first power them up. I said, try a different battery. Go get another battery. So the guy actually took my advice and he changed the battery. And within an hour of him changing the battery, there was a knock at his door. It was the people that were frantically looking for the cat that it had escaped. Um, so there you go. And that's a perfect example. People put an air tag on their cat, but if it's they don't change the battery every year, you know, they forget. Um, you know, but something like this you're not gonna to have to worry about ever changing this AirTags battery again. And uh, yeah, so simple, so, so simple. Okay guys, and don't forget to turn the switch on and make sure it's, uh, it's working and showing up on your network. Okay, have a good one. Well, now I've seen everything. Squirrel is eating my Christmas lights. He's chewed through the wire and he's taking the socket off. This is why you shouldn't make these things out of soya, which is what they do now in China. <laughs> oh my goodness. Now why would he want to eat my Christmas lights when I have all of these sunflower seeds here on the ground and bread. Yet he prefers to go take my Christmas, look at that, it just ends there and cut the wire. Oh my God.